let's make this very concrete. So here is a polynomial operator equation, but given to you in factored form. So I give you a minus 3 to the fourth power, a minus 7 plus 2i cubed, and a plus 5 minus 8i squared, and it operates on f of n. And now I just claim there is a solution. The solution is a nine-dimensional vector space. Where did I get nine from? What's the degree of that polynomial? Four plus three plus two is nine. You see, do you see the nine? Everybody see the nine, the degree nine of the polynomial. Now, I'm a nice guy, so I gave it to you in factor form. If I wanted to mess with you, I would have carefully multiplied that out. Actually, I wouldn't have carefully. I would have asked Maple to do it. And then I would have written it as a polynomial like this and said, factor it. Okay, and then you would have said, okay, big boy, and you would have left the classroom, gone to your computer or to a lab, and, and you would have fired up Maple and said, Maple, factor this. And, and it would. Okay, so, so I just saved you a trip to the lab, and I, I factored it for you. All right, so there it is in factor form. And, and now, so A minus 3 is a factor four times. That means 3 is a root of multiplicity 4. So there are four terms in the basis that correspond to that root. 3 to the n, n times 3 to the n, n squared times 3 to the n, and n cubed times 3 to the n. Is that clear? Is that really clear? It's got to be clear to you. All right. A minus 7 plus 2i is a factor, so the root is 7 minus 2i. And that's a root of multiplicity 3. So there are three terms in the basis that correspond to that, 7 minus 2i to the n, n times 7 minus 2i to the n, and n squared times 7 minus 2i to the n. The term a plus 5 minus 8i is a factor twice, so, five, so minus 5 plus 8i is the root, and it's a root of multiplicity 2. So there are two terms in the basis for those, and they are minus 5 plus 8i to the n, and n times minus 5 plus 8i to the n. That's the general solution. Now, I can say that in vector space form, just like this. The solution space, this is exactly the same equation. The solution space to this equation is a nine-dimensional subspace, and the following functions are a basis. Again, there are nine of them there. So the content of the last two slides is, is identical. On the one, I'm just listing the functions which are in the basis, and then the other one, I'm, I'm expressing it that the elements of the vector space, of the subspace, the solution space, are the linear combinations of these bases, these basis vectors. Let me take you back to linear algebra. Does a finite dimensional vector space have a unique basis? Oh, no, of course not, of course not. Any if it's a d-dimensional space, any d linearly independent vectors form a basis. So there may be many, many bases, but this is a very convenient one. Okay, now, thinking ahead to test three, just imagine all the neat little questions I can ask you and get short answers I, okay, I'm not going to give you a polynomial of degree 9 and ask you to factor it. But if I give it to you in factored form, and I just write out some function, I could ask you, is this in the solution space, yes or no? And you should be able to answer that like that. 
Very, very simple. I could, ask, I could give it to you in factored form and, and ask you to write the basis. That's the whole basis. OK, how long does that take you? 20 seconds? I, I, can, I can ask you, is this function in the basis? I can, I can write down. See how I can compartmentalize it? 